kids. How is everyone doing on this lovely Wednesday? It's also known as Hump Day, which is what one of our uh, friends here at Pal Talk just taught her young children about today. And how do we explain this? <laughs> See, the third day of the week is getting over the hump. So hopefully all of you are getting over the hump. And to make your Wednesday a little bit easier, I've brought in one of my dearest friends and also a trusted confidant. And I know I trust him because he's the only man that is allowed to touch my hair and hair is the crown and glory of every woman. This is James Corbett of the James Corbett Salon. You can check it out. You're all in front of computers right now at the James Corbett Salon dot com. Welcome, James. Welcome. Thank you. That's studio dot com. Sorry. Sorry. Where's beauty studio? Sorry. Like James to, Corbett Studio. You don't like to your house. It's just salon. We're a studio of beauty and wellness. Well, speaking of beauty and wellness, your salon slash studio yes. covers um, many, many, many different elements of Pretty much, it's like just saltism. So some of the parts equal a whole, and you really cover women and men's needs from head to toe, from hair color, haircuts, styles, blowouts, different hair treatments to skincare, makeup, nails, pedicures, acupuncture. I mean, massage. There isn't anything that you don't cover at your salon and spa. Well, I mean, I don't know about anything, but we well, try therapy. to. Well, well, even then, well, even even that tends to be a little bit, but. Um, I try to look at myself as when I'm dealing with um, a client. They're not really a client. They become kind of like a friend. I like to think of myself as their own personal little concierge. And it's, what do you need? And I like to be solution-oriented. Getting into it, spring is really about renewal, like renewal of self, a spring makeover, cleaning out the closet, so to speak. What are some of the trends right now that you see going on that you think they're must-haves? Well, one of the things that I was really inspired by by watching the uh, red carpet this season for the Oscars was the amount of pixies that were going on, the really great, adorable short. short haircuts. And I think that it was really fantastic. And I think done with the right color and the right style on the right person, of course, um, it looks really fantastic. And I think it's a fun, just lob your hair off and be daring and be sexy and Work it. Now, I love the idea of being daring and being bold and being adventurous with your style because it is just hair and it can grow back. But one of the worries that I have is can the pixie be worn by every face shape, every person? No, I mean, obviously, the thing is that, like I always say to you, whenever mm -hmm. I do a segment with you, my catchword that I like to say is look for the trends as a source of inspiration, but not necessarily actualization. Right. So the thing is, look at it and say, oh, that looks really great on her. But then find a professional and say, would this look great on me? Because just because it's a trend and it's hot may not necessarily be that it's the right thing for you. On the same token, you might be surprised. You might think, right. I never thought that I could do that and is do there, it and totally change it up. Is there like a face shape? Like, I have a heart-shaped face, which usually means that like my chin's a little longer, but I have a small face. Like, would someone with a heart-shaped face out there be able to carry a pixie, or would you say, girl, keep it long? No, I mean, I definitely think that somebody with a heart-shaped face could definitely carry it off. Me just personally knowing you, which, again, is another um, really important aspect when you're taking mm -hmm. consideration working with a client's look, is that you want to make sure that the look only fits their actual face shape, whatever, but you want to make sure it fits their personality. I'm, I'm and, not a pixie, uh, but No, no, you are not a pixie. The, thing, the furthest we could get with you is the new, like, Jennifer Aniston, like, you don't like, think I'm pixie? Like Bobby thing. My love, I love and adore you, but I know that, like, without your long flowing hair, like, yeah, not so much. <laughs> not so much. All right. You'd be good. miserable, and you'd be crying, and you would hate me. I can never hate oh, a man. That was so beautiful. Oh. oh. I'm saying to you, my love. I just give us a give moment. I just want to sit there and stay a little bit longer. So, okay, so the pixie is in. What about, uh, you know, going through the lanes, the classic bob. We saw Kitty Holmes kind of reincarnate it, reinvented that, like, several times over the past year and a half. Is the bob, like, are we just not? Well, it is. I mean, if you look at Jen Addison, yeah. Jen Addison, like, lobbed off a couple of inches. It was so kind of, like, slanted, right? She's using that kind of bob thing. Chris McMahon is an incredible hairdresser out in L.A. Um, hairstylist has been doing her hair for years and decided to change it up. And, of course, when Jennifer Aniston changes up her hair, people really take notice. Right. She um, had the Rachel. Remember the Rachel? Yeah, the Rachel, which she said she hated. I hated the Rachel, too. I have a story because we can also have, like, your worst haircut stories. And this goes for men as well. So don't feel, like, limited because guys can get really bad haircuts talking about the situation, for instance, or any of the cast members of the Jersey Shore. But 
this is this is kind of interesting. I decided that I was going to go and get the Rachel, like many girls. And I think I was like in seventh grade. I had very thick, coarse, curly hair. I was oh, going through puberty, grade. hormones. <laughs> Not good to be messing with the hair. And I went in and I said, my friend Desiree got the Rachel. And she had very thin hair and she looked so cute. And I was like, I want to look like Des. So I was like, Des and I are BFFs, we're doing matching haircuts. Well, she got her haircut, looked great. I went in and the woman like gave me a shroom cut. Like I had like three layers of hair, like a bowl around my head, and then I had like another thing going on here. I mean, it was awful, and it wouldn't grow out, and it was a very lonely seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a question from Glow Babe. What's up, Glow? Um, she wants to know what's new from this for the spring, which is what we just got into. Um, a Pixie's new, a Reincarnated Bob like Jennifer Aniston. And blah, 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 blah. Blonde? Blum, 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 blum. Damn it! I'm so sick of it! I'm sick of it! I but it's also like, it, girl, we've had this talk before, you and I, about you going blonde. It's also like, again, like, for the right person, the blonde. But I want to be blonde, It's too. like... I want to be blonde. So no, not every woman can be blonde? Not every woman can be blonde. But so what if it's like the right blonde? It's like the right blonde. You come out totally like bleach blonde and you look like a little like surfer boy. Oh, I'm totally done. I mean, my running joke right now is actually that um, I look like Justin Bieber. Um, but actually it's more like Justin Bieber's father. And it's a really sad realization in your life when you laugh at that joke. And then you're like, wait a minute, let me do the math. That's actually... Really quite possible, and that's a frightening day in your life. If anybody ask him, Selena Gomez's older, hotter sister. Uh, without a doubt. <laughs> totally. <laughs> no, it's cool. But, but really, so women out there couldn't be adventurous. If I wanted to try something different and dye my eyebrows and go with the whole thing, you're saying it just wouldn't go. Yeah, no. No. You never do. No, I mean, we could certainly do lighter pieces on you, but I think the blonde, blonde, blonde thing on you, not so much. That dream has been deferred. I have a theory about I I do have a theory about Blum Blum though, and then I do have to emphasize this. Uh, a little secret for all of you out there: not only am I obsessed with beauty and making women feel better about themselves, but I am a re reality TV show junkie. Oh my god! Especially the Real Housewives series. Um, no offense to any of the particular said housewives, but the ones on a different coast than the one coast that we're on. Oh, that's if it. you're too yeah. blonde and you start the plastic surgery too early, you actually wind up looking like you're 80 instead of 40. Right. That's all I have to say right. on that. So it, it, everything in moderation, everything has to be careful. All I can say is for brunettes out there who want to be blonde, remember when Ava Longoria and oh. Kim Kardashian did it. Oh, no. No. It was not a good look. What I was, also did it. Was that movie where God. she was dead and like... I Over my she dead body. She roots. I mean, it was like she, it was awful. No. Not, not and it costs time. a lot of money. And we're still we're still in a recession. We're still trying to save money. Going blonde is is really pricey. So it, it can be, but that's also my livelihood. But no, <laughs> I don't mean it like that. But I mean, like going completely blonde for a girl with dark dark hair like mine. Right. It's like every two weeks. Right. It would right. be like stalking your hairstylist. Right. Exactly. But you know, stalk away if you can. Cecile uh, says my hair is really short. How best can I style my hair? So like pixie short? Pixie short, Cecile. Also, I think a really great inspiration for somebody who really styles their hair really short and does it really fun and well is Halle Berry. Ooh, I love when her hair is short. But when it's long, but when it's short, like and she doesn't. just really knows how to gel it and piece it up. Either it's just really like just the classic Mia Farrow, um, short and just really pixie and flat to her head, or she goes in and she puts gel in it and twists it up and gives it some... Um, texture to it can be really fun. So that's working with a lot of pomades and stuff like that, too. Okay, so it's really all about product. Product, product, product. And you would say, like, pomades are better than, like, a mousse substance? or Well, it depends upon your hair, but usually if you're trying to go after that kind of look, you're going to need something that's got a little bit more hold. How about breasts? Are we going to do the same way? I've been seeing a lot of both Actually, on that reality show. Really? Braids. Yeah, the braids still, like... Ooh, like that kind of Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, exactly. Oh, I like that. Could you put a ribbon through your braids? Well, I mean, you said no one's saying that you can't. So, I mean, you want to live in fantasy world? Absolutely. I mean, you can put Toys R Us beads and <laughs> lifesavers in your hair if you really want to. So. Yeah, I don't think that would really work for me. Um, now, hold on. Livia is free. This is the name of our texter. Okay. Um, dyes his hair white. What does James think about that? 
uh, his hair white, that can be really cool. I mean, look at Anderson Cooper. He's known as the Silver Fox. Oh, of my God. Hair. I have seen him in person. So, I mean, Livia is free, and obviously so are you from uh, stereotypes oh. and everything else. So, right on for you if you want to dye your hair white and it looks great on you. But how do you... can look awesome. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just got a little overzealous, but, like, how do you dye your hair white? I mean, is that, like, stripping the pigment and then yeah, actually pretty putting much. white on there? Yeah, pretty much. It's, um, it's like a double process bond so basically you're bleaching out the scalp with the scalp bleach and then you're putting a toner on there which is usually a blue violet toner which is going to counteract any yellow tones to make it more white quick question if i wanted to look like storm from the x-man movie <laughs> or x-men i should say excuse thank you right um would you let me go white um Do you think, i mean like think about it. storm had similar coloring to me a, a wig would be fantastic you are never going to let me get my free flag out, <laughs> ever, 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 ever. Fantastic. All right, so our next question is, whenever I curl my hair, it turns kind of yellow-white. What am I doing wrong? Ooh. Yeah, exactly. You're burning your hair is what you're doing. So like either you need to, well, um, that's a whole other show, girl. Uh, <laughs> that's so our 330. Either your hour. curling iron is not good or the product that you're spraying on your hair before curling it is burning it, maybe not necessarily even your hair, and it's leaving a film mm -hmm. on your hair causing that, that yellow, white type thing. Um, so I would also be careful if your hair is turning yellow, white, what color is your hair anyway, and um, what color is your natural, and it could also be that you could your hair could be hanging on a thread anyway from... Oh, right. From like over processing. Yeah, exactly. Well, she's getting so good at You know this. what it is? I <laughs> learned from the best. He is like my sensei or Mr. Miyagi to right. my karate kid. Um, another question I had is like when you curl your hair, is there certain products that you should be putting in beforehand? Because I know some people say like, oh, I, hair, I put hairspray and then I curl, but it all it does is go like. Yeah, it goes, and it's scary when it goes, but, you know, a good flexible hold hairspray, one of the hairsprays that we love to use when we do it, especially for bridles, is um, Paul Mitchell Soft Spray. It's really great. Mm -hmm. You spray in the hair, and it's got, like, some nice movement and wave to it. Also, I love um, Philip B. Jet Set Hairspray, yeah. too. Um, also, flexible hold hairspray. You don't want something that's too heavy. Like Aquanet. Yeah, not so much. Yeah, my I mean, mom that, maybe you might do the dust afterwards with the aquanet, <laughs> so it's not going anywhere. But um, when you're actually in the process of curling it, um, you know you have to be really careful when you're using heat styling tools. I mean, you're you have to think of your hair as being delicate. It's a fiber, and just like as you burn a piece of clothing, if you go over it with an iron too much or let the iron sit on there too much, it's the same way with your hair. You can burn your hair. Speaking of just general rules. Um, are there certain rules like a woman should not be washing her hair every day if she has longer hair? Because if you're constantly blowing and you're constantly Well, shaving. this is definitely something that I always try and educate my clients on is that um, we've become so obsessed with cleanliness here um, that not we're me. constantly overwashing the hair. <laughs> not in that matter, girl. But, you know, in the hair, at least, you know, if you want to go walking around being out, then that's another thing. But people really, I'm just I mean, kidding, I the know, thing, let's talk about this for a second now. Please check yourself. I mean, <laughs> if there is a smell going on, there was this guy that was doing construction yeah, we in my building. It, and it's it. like, I really have to get this off my chest here for a second. It's personal hygiene. It is personal hygiene. It was the beginning of the day, granted, you know, you're a labor intense worker that can be really hot. But, like, it's not so hot when you're stinking at 10 o'clock in the morning that I don't even have to be sitting this close to you. I'm just, like, walking by and it smells like wafting, basically suffocating. Yeah, I know, I know. The I... same goes through with perfume. Okay, if your perfume lingers on after you're gone, you're using way, way too much. That's the scent of a woman, way too much. James. Way. James, you're amazing. Thank you for joining us Thank today. You for me. I hope you're going to come back soon. Absolutely. Because we haven't even gotten into summer. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Be Thanks. sure to check out jamescorbettstudio.com if you live in the tri-state area or maybe you're visiting in New York. You definitely want to stop by and see James and his amazing team of stylists. We will be back next week with the best-selling author of The Art of Social Work, Jody Single Wing. Very oh. happy to uh, be with you guys. Fabulous. And James, you're fabulous. Love you all. Have a great night, morning, Bye, evening, wherever you are. Thanks.